Welcome. My name is Angela Westhoff Johnson, and I am the Director of Product Development at OCP. I am also the Director of Music at St. Mary's Cathedral here in Portland. We are here at the OCP recording studio, Thelma's, where countless recordings have been conceived and created. But today we are here to celebrate the 100th Choral Packet, this three times a year collection of music for you to consider and evaluate for inclusion in your own repertoire. The process of publishing a choral work is an extraordinary endeavor with review, acceptance, development, editorial, engraving, recording, and marketing to ultimately make the music, both printed and recorded, available to each of you. Prior to all of this is the impulse and spark from the composer who is inspired to elevate scripture, animate singers and conductors, and hopefully the congregation in the veneration and praise of God. I saw an interview with the great British composer, arranger, and conductor John Rutter titled The Importance of Choir, and I quote, Choral music is not one of life's thrills. It's something that goes beyond to the very heart of our humanity, our sense of community and our souls. You express when you sing your soul in song. And when you get together with a group of other singers, it becomes more than the sum of the parts. All of those people are pouring out their hearts and souls in perfect harmony which is kind of an emblem for what we need in this world when so much of the world is at odds with itself, that just to express in symbolic terms what it's like when human beings are in harmony. That's a lesson for our times and for all times. He later said, a church without a choir is like a body without a soul. In Sing to the Lord, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops remind us that God has bestowed upon his people the gift of song. God dwells within each human person in the place where music takes its source. Indeed, God, the giver of song, is present whenever his people sing his praises. We would like to share and reminisce and reveal some highlights and insights of our experiences as well as celebrate this achievement of 100 choral packets. Now I'd like to introduce Scott Crandall. Scott works in music development as a specialist. And what I'd like you to tell us is how your work at OCP um, combines with the choral packet. Yes, well, um, you know, in music development, um, you know, what we're trying to do is take the composer's visions for their different pieces of music, and we are trying to create a product that music directors and singers can hold and go, this is awesome. Now, you would think that maybe that's not too complicated of a process, but composers get very inspired, and they can't wait to send their music in, or they can't wait to use it with the church choir or whatever, and what we do is kind of provide that objective framework to say, okay, you've created this beautiful piece of art, what can we do to make it so that all of our customers, or as many as possible, can really bite into this piece and enjoy it? Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes some of those things are like, you know, what key is it in? Mm -hmm. Have you considered perhaps a slightly lower key or a slightly higher key or whatever? Uh, the keyboard part, can it, can it use some, uh, you know, we want it to, to, to help the assembly sing if it's an assembly piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, choral parts. Maybe there's some parallel fifths or some certain things that need to be looked at. Mm -hmm. And I would say almost all of our composers are grateful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're afraid they're going to be a little bit um, mm -hmm. This you know, is what I've written. Off. I've written this. <laughs> this yeah. is it. Uh, but they're almost always um, amenable to mm -hmm. looking at certain issues. And uh, we don't rewrite their music, but we'll say, you right. know, maybe in this one spot, this is some issues coming up. What do you think? And 
almost always they come up with a great solution. Yeah. I should also say so. that you are a phenomenal um, composer, singer, keyboard player, conductor. You do it all. So you kind of know um, what the composer goes through as well when they're writing their pieces. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do feel like I have kind of that inside scoop, and I and I and because I see the, I see the entire process from mm -hmm. it coming in. Uh, to the, from the composer when they send it in and then all the work and everything. Uh, but that's part of our job, is to teach composers all of these different aspects mm -hmm. of, the, of where their octava, where their, where their um, song, the process that it goes through. Because if they know that, a lot of times they can start thinking ahead. Right. And so then the quality just keeps getting better and better. Right. And, better. and you and I, Scott, have a list of of like text we know we need. I'm like, Scott, we really need a piece for late Easter. Put that on the list. So yeah. sometimes you have that advantage too, that you get to know what we need. And That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what, one of the pieces that I wrote uh, was a, a, a Ver, Ave Verum Corpus. And, I love uh, it. And I just thought, because I was looking at our offerings, I thought, you know, I could use one that kind of has this and kind of I can of hear piece. it right yeah. now, Scott. I can hear your piece. Yeah. Um, not only because I was able to uh, conduct on the recording, but I use it. It's in my choir's repertoire. So right, sure. It's a, it's a gem. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. But I, I, I will say, as a composer um, who, who writes music that OCP publishes, it's kind of an honor to be able to know the inside scoop and the process but it's also an honor to be able to work with composers and give them the very best final product. Because, you know, we put a lot of work into these. Right. We have a lot of music. So, you know, we, we heard from Kevin who said um, when he first started, we had a handful of choral music. Yeah. Right. So, Scott, part of your role at OCP, I think, is to oversee Octavos and work with um, so those kind of single publication, not part of a collection necessarily yet. Sometimes they are, but mm -hmm. um, so you have the the broad scope of how many octavos we publish, and right, it's sure. a lot. I yeah. know it's a lot. Um, and uh, Scott and I worked together on um, even um, giving a facelift or making our um, octavos more robust. Our offerings, our different octavo series. So. Talk a little about that. Yeah, so the Coral Packet, uh, you know, it started in 1989, and there are approximately 2,200 octavos that went through the Coral Packet. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, which represents about 400 composers. Mm -hmm. And um, we have currently, well, a few years ago, we had 10 octavo series. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we decided to kind of improve our octavo offerings, give them a facelift. As you know, you and I worked together right. on that. And so we went from 10, 10 series up to 19 series. Mm -hmm. And we added some really key, uh, key series that allow a music director to just kind of go, oh, well, I know kind of what I want, so I'm going to go to the that series. Yeah, easier to yeah. search and find them. Yeah. So our OCP choral, ser choral series, which is kind of our biggest offering. Right. We knew that there were pieces for Advent and Christmas, Lent and Easter, all the sacraments that were doing. So we thought, how are people finding what they want in this enormous offering in the OCP choral series? Right. You know, people are always looking for, you know, a good Christmas piece, right? Right. Well, now there's the OCP Christmas and Advent, Advent Christmas series. Mm -hmm. And there's a Trinitas Advent Christmas series. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we should say that Trinitas um, it is our choral music, choral only, there's no assembly involved in it, and it's for a little bit more serious choral experience. Not always is it much more difficult, but it's crafted in a more choral only style. Right. So yeah, we yeah. pulled out the things that were for Advent and Christmas and put them in beautiful covers. Uh, I yeah. think, uh, yeah. Our art department just. Blew it out of the water. Apart. That's right. Yeah. And they it was tough because we were really opinionated, yeah, weren't yeah. we, Scott? So we've got OCP, yeah. um, OCP Advent and Christmas, Trinitas, Trinitas Advent and Christmas. Right. Yeah, that really helps. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one thing that's interesting about uh, our octavos that we've continued to improve is that, you know, we cover the whole gamut. You know, we, you know, we have music that's really, really meant for assembly. And in a lot of our OCP choral series are like that. And it has choir parts, 
which I suppose you could do as a choir anthem if you wanted to. Right. But, you know, uh, we have this you know, kind of on one side of the scale assembly music, which is our bread and butter. Mm -hmm. It's what we really, you know, what we're all about. Um, and, and so we have that. And then, and then you move over more toward giving the choirs a chance to uh, really, you know, so many of the people on our review committee, so many of our music directors, our customers, they sang choirs. Mm -hmm. They were in college choirs. Right. They sang all these imagined choral anthems. So we want to have some of that as well. Right. And then there's something in the middle. You know, we have some, we have quite a few octavos now where uh, it comes with two versions. Right. A version that you can sing with your choir as a choir anthem. And if you want to use it with your assembly, there's a hymn version. Mm -hmm. And you can just do a simple version of it, all in one octavo. And, and so we're trying to cover the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. So to talk, what are the new series? So we had 10, and then we added 9. Did we add 9? Do we have 19? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, some of the new series, for instance, we have a Marion series, Love which it. is your idea. And I think that is, it's, it, it makes it so easy. If you want Marion music, you don't want to search through 1,900 yes. octavos, because not every Marion octavo starts with... Mary, <laughs> right. right? Or it doesn't have the word Mary in the title. Exactly. Or, yeah, right. right. Uh, but another interesting series that we started uh, was called Inspired Songs. And that kind of focuses on uh, uh, more like, in fact, those didn't even have assembly editions. No. They're, it's more of like a vocal solo and sometimes we'll add choir parts to it as a, as a mm -hmm. uh, that's been an and interesting And the style series. might not feel as liturgical. Right, you right. Could, not to say that you couldn't use them as a prelude. But yeah. they're very moving and artistic in a different way. Yeah, we, we were getting these submissions, and it was almost like a, a musical theater flair. Mm, and, and beautiful. But, but the well melodies done. were so good. You know, yeah. So. so Inspired Songs, we also have a spiritual series. Right. Which, um, yeah. wonderful addition. Um, we have, okay, so we have Trinitas, but we also have our children's series. That music in that series kind of is... For little kids, uh, you know, but then we have this a little more serious series for um, children's choir that are working toward perfecting that art. That right. series is called Jubilate Deo. Right, yeah. Great series. Well, you know, the, our choral series for young people, you know, has a, you know, a tremendous resource. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, you use the word Carrie Landry, the, or the composer Carrie Landry. It's just one of the many composers. Chris Walker, there, Chris yeah, Walker, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you have these, uh, you know, children's choirs that, you know, they're, they're rehearsing every week mm -hmm. a, a lot, and and they're the kind of the kind, of, you know, the the best singers in their elementary school or their, right. you know, and and they need a place, right, to to really uh, present some music for choirs, yeah. And so that's what that series is So this, you a little more serious. Yeah. Some of the other stuff is so cute, but this is a little bit more like um, working with choirs to d further develop their choral experience. So that's right. that's another series that we have. We had 10 choral series, I think, before. Now right. we've added nine of them just to really help find the music as a music director you're looking for so that your searching is easier. So we added the two Christmas series. Right. Um, the Marian Choral Series. Well, an another new one is the Psalm Series. Perfect. Yeah. Psalms. Because, uh, you know, we have great psalm resources at OCP. But what if... You know, you can't find anything particular or, you know, if we, or as a review committee, you know, OCP, we review a, a new psalm that's amazing, but we can't really put it in one of our, our psalm resources. Yeah, Psalters, well, yeah. Well, the psalm series allows us to put in, you know, mm -hmm. some, some individual psalms that people might really enjoy. That's right. Yeah. Um, we also have the intercultural music series. It's not brand new, but it's relatively new. Right. Um, that's where music goes in that might have multiple languages. Not just we have, of course, cantar alabanzas, that's bilingual or Spanish language, but our um, intercultural, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we know uh, the intercultural series uh, has some really key contributor, contributors and, and uh, Rufino Zaragoza is one of right. them. Um, but, you know, looking for music that, <laughs> you know, from a, from a publisher's perspective, you know, not everything we produce is going to sell a million copies, you know? Right. But that's okay, because we're here we to We would serve... love to sell a million copies, wouldn't we? <laughs> Let's sell a million copies That sounds something. good. <laughs> but, you know, uh, but, uh, you know uh, uh, we, we serve the whole church. Mm -hmm. And there are uh, certain areas of the country where intercultural uh, music expressions are common. Right. 
And so we need to provide, you know, some music that has some Vietnamese, um, other languages, you know, and, and it combines them all in a nice octavo, you know. And so uh, that's an exciting series. Yeah, it and, is. And I think that there's always uh, interesting possibilities for mm -hmm. that series. Yeah. So we're approaching 10 years ago when we had so many mass settings. Right. And then people were done. They had their mass settings. <laughs> right. They had to teach new mass settings. But we started a new series of just mass settings. Yes. Easy to find, beautiful, gorgeous cover, I love that stained glass. Stained glass. Oh, it's yeah. so nice. So yeah. we're continuing to add to that series all right. the time. So Yeah, we just have a new a new uh, mass that came through and we're going to be publishing. And it's, it's nice to have a place to put it. Exactly. It doesn't have to be part of a collection. You know, and, and Sarah Hart's new mass uh, for Choose Christ. And, uh, you know, we have a place for those. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So let's get back to the coral packet. We have... We're approaching 100. We're actually approaching 102, I right, think, as yeah. we're, we we've worked so far, yeah. far ahead. But 100 coral packets. Tell us some stats about the coral packets, maybe that we, like, you mentioned 400 and some different artists, composers yeah, about, in them. Yeah, about 400 different composers. Wow. And, you know, that that's pretty remarkable, you know, if you think about, if you think about a room with 400 people in it, that many composers. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes the choral packet is the the avenue for a new composer. Oh, a new right. young work we're, we're building, we're um, developing, um, and you've worked with a lot of them, Scott. Yes. So just recently we did a recording session that um, probably will go down for me as one of the most memorable because Ah, it's emotional that we think of we were 18 months or so of not working together. Yeah. And we did a session. It was July. It was, yeah, I remember it because it was uh, my birthday and it was really hot. It was 115 in Portland. And that is just not, we aren't used to that. No, we are not. So we had. Or a, prepared for. Or it. prepared. <laughs> and it, ugh. But that session in particular, we did a piece by a new composer, Justin Wedgwood. Um, Oh, love of God incarnate. It's stunning. It's yeah. beautiful. Uh, we did a piece by Scott Crandall <laughs> and um, Michael Jonkis' text that I think, I remember Scott as I was preparing for it and I was playing it not so beautifully and I was like, yeah, this is nice, but it's more than nice. It is a gem. And it, it kind of, I was moved to a different, Scott was in the room and that's always exciting, I'm yeah. sure as a oh. composer oh. to hear this sort of instant, this come before your eyes so beautifully. But um, that session will go down for me as a as a memory and your piece was part of it. I appreciate that. You know, I, <laughs> just hit the microphone, sorry. Um, but anyway, I appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, one of the th if I, if I think about the new new composers that are coming on board through the choral packet, it's a great way for them to do it because it's one piece. Yeah. It's not like a big whole thing. Yeah. It's one piece that they've written that we're going to publish and give them a start. And it's interesting the whole process. It, if I could just say one thing to composers, uh, it's go ahead. Don't be afraid to revise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know we all have limited time. But when a composer revises and revises and keeps making it better and better, you usually end up with something great. And that that's what I've learned through the process of a composer mm -hmm. is that, you know, I, I'll write a piece. And, I, and honestly, even to this day, I'll write it and I'll think, oh, that's good. I'm done. And I'll sit on my piano and I'll look at it the next day mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> in the next week. And if I wait a few months, after it's a few months... Better. It's like fine wine, you know, it uh -huh. just gets better. So uh, that's one of the things that really has been an eye opener for me is mm -hmm. uh, when you think something's done, it might not be quite done. You know, and one more thing, Scott, you, you mentioned that um, I've been so privileged to work with a lot of composers in their uh, uh, conducting their music. And the ones that say, do whatever feels right in this yeah. space. Often they aren't there. <laughs> that makes it easier. Yeah. But someone like Robert Benson, you've worked with him a couple on some of his pieces. He, right. he, um, boy, is he a gem to work with. And he will say, you made it even better. In, uh, you, we, OCP, not me. But better than I thought it could be. It came to, to life. Well, I have to say something about that. Because, you know, 
there are very few composers who have the opportunity to hear their music performed at a super high level. Right. You know, they're, they're liturgical musicians. They're they're rehearsing twenty pieces of music over the you know, right. and they're they're getting it done. But the OCP recording sessions, mm. we have the opportunity to bring the music to its best life yeah. with the singers, yeah. the recording people, yeah. <laughs> the recording engineers, and the producers. Uh, the space. The that space. Just... The cathedral. I mean. So almost yeah. invariably, the composers are always blown away, mm -hmm. like, wow. <laughs> like you said, I didn't know it could sound that good. <laughs> right, right. So any so, pieces you want to just even just give us a highlight on, that one stood out. I know that's uh, hard to do. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I was thinking about, you know, I was looking at the list of 2,200 pieces or whatever, and I was like, <laughs> how do I even? But I thought, you know, I just mentioned a, a couple. Yeah. Um, you know, one of them is uh, Peace I Leave With You, Robert Farrell. Oh, beautiful. Robert Farrell. Okay, here's a guy who... Um, has uh, sent a lot of music into has, OCP. But he discovered composing late in life. Wow. He was the resident composer at the uh, Cathedral in Pittsburgh. Yes. Still is, I think. Uh -huh. But he only started really writing music, I think, about 10 years ago or so. Wow. As far as submitting music. Right. He had written music, but he didn't ever really think about the idea of publishing. And now he's so prolific. Mm -hmm. Funny story about him is he wrote it, sent in a piece, and he was using a uh, notation program. He couldn't figure it out. And a big, long, complicated piece. And um, he, he's, he's, and we wanted him to change some things. And yeah. he goes, I don't know how to do that. You know what? Forget that piece. I'll send it a different <laughs> We're piece. like, no, we don't want to forget that piece. <laughs> <laughs> no, we like it. We want to publish it. So we worked with him and got it figured out. But, um, yeah, that was... Another composer, Casey McKinley. Uh, he's a music director in, in uh, Long Beach. Uh, yeah, or yeah, Long Beach area. Uh -huh. And um, you know, he wrote uh, a new setting to Three Days, which is which is as you know, right? So many people do it to the Gustav Holst uh, Thaxted. Three. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, Casey wrote a completely different ver setting of it, right. of that beautiful text. Mm -hmm. Contemporary song, contemporary songs of faith. It has a contemporary feel, completely different, and I think. The both. Very and, good. Aren't they both in? Did they go into the into music issues? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's so Empty Ridge's text. Empty Ridge, with right. two different musical settings, and it's tough to piggyback on something like Thaxton, <laughs> but <laughs> right. he did it. He did it. Uh huh. A couple of those I'll mention. Uh, what uh, you know. I know you, you think the same way. You're always looking for that piece that people will come up to you after the liturgy and say. Well, I tell you what, the number one piece I that, I, that I get that is when we do Nada Te Turbe. Me too. Craig Kingsbury's setting. It's stunning. The choir, people in the congregation come up yep. and they say, oh, It's so a brilliant beautiful. piece. And the, the, the piece that sounds more difficult than it is, choir directors love those. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's Craig's piece. So well done. Yeah. And then uh, I've already mentioned my Abba Verum Corpus, but I want to mention something else about my setting of that. And that is that, you know, we try to take a comprehensive look at a piece before we publish it. Um, I had this piece and I had written Abbe Verum Corpus and Rick Maudlin, mm -hmm. uh, who we work with, he, um, he said, you know, I've seen different settings, uh, different uh, ways that the Latin goes in this certain area. So we did a bunch of research into how that particular phrase is done and with, you know, there's how many settings of Abbe Verum yeah, Corpus are. Yeah, a lot. But there's a certain phrase now that's done differently. And so for this setting and for any future settings we, we would do of that text, we found uh, a way to incorporate all the different ways that that phrase is done, mm -hmm. you know, so that it's scholarly. Mm -hmm. We want it to be a definitive publication. Right. Um, so anyway, that, that's, that's just a few pieces that, right. uh, I mean, there's so many of it. Thanks, Scott, for all the work you do helping composers, because I know they appreciate it. And the musical compositions, I am selfish to say thank you, because <laughs> they're in my repertoire, and our choir loves them. So thank you. I, I'm honored. Thank you. <laughs> the Catholic bishops again remind us that a cry from deep within our being Music is a way for God to lead us to the realm of higher things. As St. Augustine says, singing is for the one who loves. Music is therefore a sign of God's love for us and of our love for him. In this sense, 
it is very personal. But unless music sounds, it is not music. And whenever it sounds, it is accessible to others. By its very nature, song has both an individual and a communal dimension. Thus, it is no wonder that singing together in church expresses so well the sacramental presence of God to his people. OCP's mission is to help people encounter God and his love. It is our hope that music can elevate liturgy and make these encounters possible. I wish to thank all of my esteemed colleagues for this conversation and reminiscing today. For those of you watching this, thank you. Thank you for spending this time with us to share music that can unite and inspire and heal. Music that will change your worship experience. From all of us at OCP, may you be blessed in your ministry.